Jasper looks up the moment you enter the room. It's obvious that he's been waiting tensely for your return. He doesn't say much. He just suggests that it's been a long day and you should retire to bed. You thank him. His expert butlery disapproval making you feel a little guilty about the whole thing. Earth Day! A new day dawns, only three days remaining until the self-introductions. Oh god! I'm scared for those. We are going to die. We yes. have no self-defense. Ab absolutely. Somebody's gonna throw a spear at our face. It's gonna be good. <laughs> oh, not the old party spear trick. <laughs> Just ha ha! You open up a can of spears, tabs you in the <laughs> face. <laughs> Way to go, loser. As soon as the... What? No, sorry, go on. I was going to say, I want to go to that party. <laughs> a fun party it would be. As soon as the remains of breakfast have been cleared away by Rhea, and, no, and Rhea is satisfied that you are dressed and prepared for an outdoor venture, you head out towards the gardens where you agreed to meet Earl Emmett. Oh yes, I remember this. Hello! Aren't you hey, adorable? Pretty. <laughs> You blink into the bright morning sun, only to realize that Earl Emmett is already waiting for you. His warm smile breaks into a great grin as soon as your eyes meet, and he waves at you enthusiastically. He's practically bouncing with energy as you make your way to him. Clearly mornings and the outdoors are his natural element. We can't date him, not if mornings are his thing. <laughs> I like mornings. I'm a morning uh, person. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Aww. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a night person either, though, so... Just a mid-afternoon person. Well, no, I like to get up early, but I don't want to get up at 6am. I mean, that's fair. Oh god, what was his voice? Good morning, Lady Fremmy, and how are you? I hope you slept well. Isn't it a lovely morning? I've slept well, and I'm doing well. Thank you for asking, and you... You really never learned how to only ask one question at a time, did you? <laughs> Good morning, Earl <laughs> Emmett. It is a lovely morning, and I'm glad that I will be spending it with you. Ah, it's a morning, therefore it cannot, in fair conscience, be called good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Miss Literal over here. We're charming, though, aren't we? So surely the third one? That's what I was thinking. I like that one a lot. Yeah, we're going to flirt with everyone. Heck yes. Harem. <laughs> Reverse harem. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Get it right. He grins cheerfully. Why, I was thinking just the same thing. A happy coincidence. Oh god. <laughs> the gardens here are pretty and all, but I thought it would be nice if we wandered a bit and got to see some of the natural beauty of the isle. It is a really lovely place, isn't it? Surprising that they never really got conquered or got a lot of attention before Katya's time, isn't it? Well, it all worked out for the best. I guess people must have a better time feeling all peaceable when the place they are at is so nice. Shall we go? It's before hard to read the last <laughs> Yeah, he's, he talks a lot. Before you can so much as nod your agreement, Earl Emmett is off like an excited puppy, and the pair of you leave the grounds to explore some of the nature around the castle. How are you doing? Are you keeping up okay? If I'm going too fast, just go ahead and holler, or holler at me, yo, or <laughs> even bop me on my head. My sister says I never remember how difficult, how much difficult all the layers and skirts and such making wa make walking for the lady folk. So if it gets to be too difficult, just let me know. You take the opportunity given by his long, breathless speech to catch some breath of your own. He charges into the brush, path or no path, with full speed and enthusiasm and keeping up to him hasn't been the easiest thing you've ever done. Can I just say, with the flowers in the background, it looks like we've shrunk and become Tom Thumb and Thumbelina? We, we are, yes, absolutely. I'm gonna grow wings oh. soon. <laughs> we are pixies. Yes! <laughs> oh, look behind you. You whirl around, telling yourself that if he was pointing at something dangerous, he would have used that happy tone of voice. You are relieved to see there aren't any strange charging beasts. Instead, it seems like he's pointing at a large flower, half as tall as you, with bright multicolored petals and the center as big and round as your face. Do you know what that is? Nope. A large flower? It better not be poisonous, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> a large flower. 
think, I think it's go... a large flower. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Animal and plant knowledge failure. <gasps> no way. Who the thunk? <laughs> Wait, does that mean it isn't a large flower? No. It's a werewolf. Uh -huh. That's true. It's the giant version of a flower named Maiden's Vigil. It's rare, but about a hundred years ago, people started finding giant versions of normal plants, trees, and flowers. No one knows exactly why. No one can seem to breed or reproduce them. They seem to have to happen in the wild. Is that why we're in a giant flower patch right now? Yes. <laughs> it's just a normal-sized flower. We're just tiny. Oh. I've only ever seen one once before. We are very lucky to see this one. He walks up to the flower, grinning up at it in a way that was more pleased admirer than you've ever seen on any of your love-struck fellows upon first witnessing some of the hugely attractive fellow delegates. Please tell me the flower eats him. <laughs> he pats its long green stem before he apologizes to the flower and gently plucks one of the petals. The one he chose was golden orange, tinged red, like a sunrise. He hands... He hands offers it to you with a <laughs> grin. <laughs> sure. But the way he gently holds it is like it's something precious. For you. He's we got no chance us. with this guy. No. We got no chance with him. He's into flowers, it seems. He's just too good. You take it gingerly and carefully secure it to your small rectangle. It should be very good for you here at the summit. Have you ever heard the story behind the name of the Ver Maiden's Virgil? Vigil? I didn't even know this was a flower. He doesn't give you much time to answer before launching into the story as the pair of you resume walking. Well, I thought this was a dog. <laughs> According to the myth, there was a very jealous father who had many useless sons and one precious daughter. He kept her locked away in a tower, for he couldn't stand the thought of any other man looking at her beauty and taking her away. That didn't stop him from bragging to anyone who would listen about her. She was like the sun, he said, and just to look upon her face would be to be blessed with the gentlest of sunshine. Her father was a traveling merchant, who could afford a tower, mm -hmm. and he often brought presents back for his lonely daughter. One day he was tricked by an old witch who got him to trade his valuable spices for a bag of seeds, claiming that inside was the key to his daughter's happiness. The merchant wasn't very happy, but he nonetheless gave the seeds to his daughter. The next night, after he had left to go traveling again, his daughter had a dream. A voice told her to plant the seeds at the bottom of her tower, to smile at them and give them water every day, and when they bloomed, they would show her happiness at last. She didn't know how to plant them. <laughs> She's us. <laughs> Considering that she could never leave a tower room, so in the end she sang a song to the wind and asked it to carry them down safely for her, and threw them out of her open window. Yeet. <laughs> That's how I'm going to plant seeds. Toss them. There you go. <laughs> Most of the seeds were lost on the wind, but maybe by chance, and maybe because the wind liked her song and took pity on her, one of the seeds took root in the ground right below her window. She followed the instructions of the voice in her dreams, and every day she smiled at it, and every night she made sure it got water, by leaning outside her window and letting her lonely tears rain down. Oh, you know, just use a cup. Sad. No, she, she has no, pulled. she has no water in her room. So how is she not dead? Her father will bring her a tray. A tray of water. <laughs> yes, a tray of water. That's it. Slowly, the seed became a small plant, and the small plant became a flower, yet to bud. Every day she smiled, and every day she cried, and the plant grew and grew, growing towards her like she truly was the sun. Finally, one day the flower had grown long enough, but it reached her window, and that day it bloomed, each petal a different vibrant color. The daughter took one look at the sturdy stalk, grabbed hold of her flower and climbed down from the tower and left her father behind. But the stalk snapped and she fell to her death. From that day on, she was in control of her own fate and never cried at night again. Is any of it true? He shrugs. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea, but knowing would take a lot of the fun out of it, don't you think? In any case, ever since then, a petal from the Maiden's Vigil has been considered good luck for a young lady when her future seems uncertain. I hope that much is true and it brings you good things, Lady Frammy. Thank you. It's a thoughtful gift and a lovely story. Where did you learn it? I was the father. Oh, God! You know, I can't remember where exactly I learned that one, but my traveling has resulted in anything if... Wait... 
<laughs> There's a word missing there. But if my travelling has resulted in anything, it's a great deal of stories and knowledge, and the different animals and plants of the world. Well, I suppose they don't seem like very useful talents to you either. My father certainly didn't think so. He said such nonsense was useless for a future Earl. I suppose your father had a point. They aren't very noble pursuits. I can think of a lot of talents you have that make you a good Earl. I really like your stories. I think it's more important to find things that you are happy about being good at than living up to what others expect you to be good at. Mmm. I like all of the last three. Yes. As do I. I do like his stories, even if they don't seem very realistic. Yes. Maybe the bottom one, though? I think that would be good. Let's do that. Let's encourage him. Yeah. His smile doesn't change, but his expression grows more thoughtful as he considers what you have said. You know, my first instinct is to argue with you, talk about duty and responsibility and being proper. But the voice in my head who says all that sounds an awful lot like father. Maybe you're right. Maybe I should be happy doing what makes me happy. Murder. <laughs> I can't see him murdering anybody with that happy dopey <laughs> face. <laughs> The pair of you briefly stop to catch your breath, and you realize that you have reached the top of a lakeside cliff. You didn't realize the castle had a lake so nearby, but considering the need of fresh water, it makes sense. He's going to push us off the cliff. I told you, murder. <laughs> you were right, man. Have a nice you were trip. Right. <laughs> the view below is quite pretty, so long as you aren't afraid of potentially making that long fall. Although, with the water right below, you're pretty sure bearing any unfortunate accidents, like banging your head on the rocks, you would survive it. Imagine if he just smiles at us and jumps off. <laughs> Wee! Adventure! The Earl breaks into a bright, beaming smile of triumph. This is the best part of exploring. When you find some great natural vista like this, it makes you remember how great the world can be, doesn't it? His smile and enthusiasm are so genuine you find yourself instantly smiling back. It's too bad there aren't more cultures that think things like exploring nature are good to get to know one another. It makes a lot more sense than doing silly things like dancing in a small, stuffy room or trying to converse when a hundred other people are talking at the same time, meaning everyone is shouting and no one can hear anyone else anyway. Is that the way people get to know each other in all places you've visited? Sadly, yes. The nobles, anyway. Is there a reason that you have traveled so much, my lord? Or was it all just an attempt to gain more stories and knowledge of local fauna? A reason? Well, it wasn't my choice. Not at first. My father believed in very strict ideas about what was duty and how you did it. Not even a four-year-old got to shirk their duty and was expected to be stoic about it. So, when it was discussed that the nobles of Ireland should put some more focus on building positive relations with people of the other countries, I was sent away to foster with a noble family in Wellin that were related to my mother. I was there for two years? Well, before my foster mother got sick and I was sent back. I was home for a few months before I was put on a ship to spend some time with a distant relative and my grandfather in Revere. Well... Oh. I'm sorry, my phone made a bling. <laughs> well, things were getting really contentious there, so I wasn't there for very long. After that, I spent a few years fostered in jail, then another year on a ship with someone from Heist, and, well, basically, I've spent just about everywhere. After hearing that, I'm more impressed with your cheerfulness and positive attitude than I was before, and your mother was okay with having you sent so far away so young. After a story like that, you have to wonder if your father just really, really disliked you. Except home. I don't know about any of those. Mm. Maybe the top or second one? I kind of want to try the second one, because I haven't actually tried that one yet. Ooh, let's do it then, just for that reason. Alright. Well, my mother did everything my father told her to. That was her way of adhering to her duty. I suppose she must have felt even, even more obligated since my father saved her family from some rather depressing debts as part of their marriage agreement. Anyway, she died when I was still young, so I'll never know how she really felt about it. Well, I didn't bring you here so we could have gloomy reminisces about my past. We should enjoy the view while we can. I think we have to return soon. 
You are both enjoying the view when a loud grumble from the Earl's stomach echoes loudly. He blushes fiercely and scratches his lowered head with embarrassment. <laughs> I'm starting to feel peckish. Should we return so we can have lunch? He gives you a grateful look and the pair of you tromp back through the wilderness in search of food. It has been a peaceful, if vaguely, dirt-filled morning with the Earl, and you are beginning to understand him a little better. Additionally, thanks to his enthusiasm for both the local plants and his happiness to share his thoughts on them at every opportunity, you feel, you know, you now feel much more knowledgeable about them. Nature walk. Woo-ooh. 